Do you have a scene where you might have hundreds of different objects, all with different materials and textures, but all using the same shader, and you'd like to change a single value across all those objects with one script, as you see here? Well, we're going to show you how to do that in this video. So let's give you some background as to what this scene is all about. Here I have a lot of different objects, all with different materials, but they're all going to be using the same shader. So if I click on one of these objects and scroll down, you'll see that my shader is a custom one I created called Warsaw Standard Wear. And what makes it custom is that not only have I taken the different channels and compacted them into fewer textures, I also have a wear channel. And I use this wear channel to determine how objects are going to wear or get dirty or degrade over time with a single value. If we take a look at my shader, if you take a look at all my properties, you'll notice most of them are all textures, except for one at the end, which I've commented out. And that's my wear amount. When I first created this shader, it was a single float value that you would pass in. The problem is that I would have a different float value that I have to pass in for every single object, which means that in theory, I'd have to aggregate, that is search for all the objects using this shader, and then iterate over every single one whenever I wanted to make a change. There had to be an easier way. So I looked up something called global shader values. If we scroll on down, instead of having a property where this value is exposed, if we scroll down, we'll see that I have a uniform float underscore where amount. Now by making this a uniform global value, instead of exposing it in my property, I can affect this one value and have it impact all the different materials that are using this one shader. I went and created a game object and created my own script called global where. Global where is very simple. Now, when I was first setting this up, I thought that I would have to create several different functions that would request and gather all the game objects in the entire scene that were using the same shader. That's the method you can see here. Let's just go ahead and delete that. So what I have is a method called setWhere. That's the only one that's important. And it's going to take in the where value that I set and call shader.setGlobalFloat. Now it's not just floats you can deal with. If you take a look at the Unity documentation, you'll see that you have setters for just about every type that you'll have inside of a shader, as you can see here. I'm using a float here in order to determine whether or not different parts of my model should appear dirty and gritty, or if they should appear new and pristine. So by calling shader.setGlobalFloat and using the name of the variable I set up inside of my shader, as well as the value, I'm able to change all the different objects in my scene, even though they have different materials. So here, you'll notice that if I select this kitchen counter, I have a kitchen island material. And if I select this wall, I instead have a 5x5 blue-white wall. You'll notice that none of them have those values exposed. I can't directly change what the where value is. However, if I come down here to my global where script, and I move this left and right, you'll notice that they all change together. Now, eventually, my entire scene will be set up so that all the objects change. But for right now, those are the only ones that I actually have done. Now, how did I make it so that I have this little bar over here that I can manipulate things in my inspector with? Well, I created a custom editor script to replace what's shown in my inspector. So under assets, I have a special folder called editor. That's important. These scripts are going to be under the editor folder. And if I double click on editor global where, here's my script. So you'll notice there are a few differences with a script like this, and that is I'm using Unity editor. I also am telling Unity what custom editor this is for. In this case, I'm saying it's for a global where script. So wherever there's a global where script, it's going to replace the editor UI layout with the one I've created here. Now, if we scroll down, you'll notice I have one method inside of this that controls pretty much everything on inspector GUI. So when the inspector is being populated or drawn, it's going to look at this code and figure out how to draw it. Now, the script you have selected in Unity is called the target. So I need to typecast that over to a global where object. Now that it's of type global where, I'll be able to access any methods that it has. I go ahead and I create a horizontal slider. I specify the value that it's at, as well as the minimum and maximum, and store that value over here. I check to make sure that typecast worked by seeing whether or not it's equal to null. Then I go ahead and call the selected.setWhere method I showed you earlier and pass in the value. Now, if you do that, there's a good chance you're not going to see anything actually update in your viewport. So what I do is I grab the editor window and then I call repaint to make sure that it will continually repaint it every time this gets called. And with that, I'm able to go ahead and grab my global wear value, move to the left and right, and have all the objects in my scene affected at the same time. This is perfect when you thought that maybe you'd have to have lots of different objects stored in a script and iterate over each one, but in this case, you don't have to. Because they're all going to be using the same value, I can use these global methods to make things a lot easier. I'll see you all next time. So long and goodbye.